In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. All righty, folks. Who's awake? It's like 7 in the morning in my mind right now. I didn't think y'all would come to church that early. Just being honest about you 10 o'clockers. It's like 9 right now in your heads. How's that feel? Considering you're not laughing, I know it's not good. Yeah, okay. Distractions. How many of you like to be distracted when you're in the middle of minutia at work? How many of you like to be distracted? Any takers? Right, most of us don't want to be distracted. We hate distractions. And in our gospel story today, Jesus is doing his thing. He's coming along. He's healing folks. He's casting out demons. And then some Pharisees show up to say, hey, Herod wants to kill you. You need to get out of here. Now, this is the same Herod who already tried to kill Jesus, right? This is the same Herod who, in the same house, really, the same lineage, I should say, that's always been out to get Jesus. Because Jesus challenged everything they knew, their power, their authority, all of that good stuff. And this is something I'm going to have to get used to now with the time change. Because that's something spectacular right there. Sorry, folks over here, I'm not going to get to look at y'all as much because I don't see you really. I know you're there. You're in my heart, too. But Herod was out to kill Jesus. And we remember after Christmas, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And that's where Herod sent out and tried to uh, get rid of every child age three to zero. Because he didn't want Jesus. Jesus challenged every aspect of Herod's power. After all, these this large entourage of people came from the Far East. And we always think of it as the three, you know, we always think about the kids who dress up like the three kings and come down the aisle, right? Like the cute three kings and always Melchior falls down or steals from the other one, you know. Next thing you know, you got one king with all three gifts by the time you get to the front, right? You've been there, you've seen that happen. And then the king's laying on the floor crying and screaming and tantruming, wondering why they don't get to carry the gold. And why not to carry the, Fran I don't even know what frankincense is. Why not to carry that? Anyways, oh, hey, honey, I didn't know you were going to make it today. <laughs> I just told a bunch of people that. Okay, so anyways, so these kings come. You can tell I need some sleep. Uh, distracted, distracted, distracted. So these kings come. Herod sees all of these kings. The three kings plus their entourage show up. And you have to wonder, if you're King Herod, who it could be so important that these large entourage, these wise men from the east show up? And you've got to think how far they traveled. They didn't come to see me. So who in the world did they come to see? Who is this Jesus? And then Herod's hearing things like, son of God, king. And if you're a king, and there's another king in your kingdom, what are you going to do? Right? You're going to go to war. I mean, you're going you're gonna to fight. You don't want that. So this is the same Herod of that time who is challenging, or, or the Pharisees are speaking about in our gospel story today. But Jesus holds firm. He holds firm, and he gives a, uh, he projects ahead as to what he's going to do. He says, I'm doing t these things on the first day and the second day and the third day. I'll complete my work, which is a foreshadowing of what's going to happen on the cross and what Jesus is accomplishing. He doesn't let distractions get in the way of what he's been called to do. He doesn't let distractions, he doesn't let people, he doesn't let things get in the way of what he's all about. To be a kingdom builder, to be somebody, as our Apostle Paul says in our lesson today, to be an imitator of Christ is to truly imitate Christ, is to follow Jesus, to be somebody that Jesus calls us to be. And that's hard to do because we're constantly distracted. We're distracted by the world. We're distracted by our own thoughts. We're distracted by all sorts of things that prevent us from staying the course. Now, Jesus also reminds us in our story today that part of what these people are going to do that are trying to distract him is they're going to be the ones that when he comes to Jerusalem finally, when he gets there, on Palm Sunday we celebrate this, right? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Everybody's so celebratory that Jesus has entered Jerusalem because they think that Jesus is going to yield a sword and he's going to remove the Romans and everybody that they think shouldn't belong, right? The great who's in and who's out, right? What's your list for who's in and who's out? I'm just kidding, you don't tell me. Right? We all have this idea. We always, as humans, we always try to decide who's in and who's out. 
And that's what they think Jesus is going to do, is cast out everybody that they think is wrong and make it all right. But what does Jesus do? None of the above. And what do they do to him? Put him on a cross. Because he's not the God they wanted. They tried to reduce Jesus' ministry to fit some box. And that's what we do. That's what we do. Those are the great distractions. Last week we talked about temptation. Temptations are distractions. They're distractions that take us away from the work of the gospel. There's a reason Jesus tells us two simple commandments. He doesn't reread to us Torah. He doesn't reread to us Leviticus or the book of the laws. He says, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Everything you've known to this point hangs on these two commandments. Don't be distracted by the minutia of the laws of old that you've misused, that you've misplaced to cast stones and to build divisions and to build walls to divide people up. Those are distractions. To love God and to love your neighbor as yourself is to be grounded, is to be an imitator of Jesus Christ, is to be somebody who loves, who cares, who builds bridges, not walls, who longs to be in community, who doesn't assume they have it all figured out, that they can learn. And we come together as a body of the faithful here at St. Francis to do that work, to bolster each other, to support one another. That's what we do. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus, to be an imitator, as Paul says. We don't get off in the minutia. We don't get distracted by those thoughts in our mind that scare us, those thoughts that call us into some kind of crazy action against somebody else. No. We pay attention to those thoughts in our minds that call us into unity, that call us into building, bringing peace, to bring hope, to bring love and life, because that's what we're called to do. That's what it's all about. Our brothers and sisters, during the season of Lent, let us take inventory and stock of the distractions in our life. What are those voices and, and things that we hear? What are those things that we fight internally that pull us away from the love of God, that keep us from staying focused on the work God's calling us to do? What are those things that prevent us from following the gospel? And let's work on those. Let's lean on each other. Let's lean on this community. Let's lean on our faith. Let's lean on our friendships. And let's remember that what we do here is not just a Sunday thing, it's an everyday thing. That to come here is just to be reminded of the very reality that God loves us, and that God longs to be with us, and that God cares for us. And not to, to remove the distractions, to focus on what's really important. I know what distractions are all about. I have an 18-month-old and a 4-year-old. I can't even unpack a box without somebody screaming. I won't even get Vanessa up here to talk about her reflections on that. It's crazy. Life is full of distractions. It's full of opportunities for us not to follow the gospel. Our job is to fight them, to address them, and to stay focused on Jesus Christ, on the one who gives us life, the one that gives us hope, and the one that gives us strength to do the work that he calls us to do. Amen.